All right, guys, today we have something interesting. Let's check it out. So this is a double din head unit. If you guys know anything about stereo, you know that they're seeing a single din, double din, and some of the double dins have touchscreen. But what is this? This is a cheap Amazon touchscreen. But is it any good? Well, we're gonna find out. Everybody knows that all the good brands right now are being bought up or they're being sold at crazy prices. So what do we have? Well, we had the Walmart special. That worked out okay, but it had an issue with the firmware bug or whatever. If you can catch that in time on a new one, they can be a pretty good unit. But what about the guys who just wanna go on Amazon and buy something? I've tried the $40 units. They don't work very well. I've tried the $80 units. They also don't work very well. I've tried the $100 units. This is a $250 unit. Now you might say, well, Walmart has name brands for $250. Well, this one supposedly has a better feature set. Is this $250 unit better than the one you can buy at Walmart for $250? And I would say, if everything else works as planned, I would say yes, based on one thing alone. And that is on the side right here, it says model. This is an OX-C8 Pro. OX-C8 Pro. And what that means is that this one has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Built-in wireless. So. That feature alone could put it over the top. Also, I've seen in the documentation that this is analog HD backup camera, which means a backup camera should be a much higher resolution. Let's just, uh, let's open it up and see what it's actually about and we'll go from there. All right, so let's open this package. This is a Chinese radio. It is a different one. So it comes with some brackets. Okay, those are cool. We'll get to that. Uh, this is the backup camera, which looks to be pretty generic, but it's pretty cool that they include that. A lot of the cheaper ones will include a backup camera. Uh, some of them are hit and miss, some of them quit working after a while. Some of them work pretty well. This is the camera. I don't really like this style with this little fancy bracket here, uh, but it is a backup camera. It does come with one. Okay, here's the harness for the vehicle side. I'm noticing a, a couple things. One of which is this antenna. So it has a very powerful Bluetooth antenna and I'm wondering if that's not to do with the uh, Android Auto. It also has a USB attachment and this is the power cables and the camera cables. Very cool. And then it has a standard radio pin. And this is got your speakers, power, and a couple other things. These power wires are actually pretty decent size. They're pretty big, especially compared to the speaker. So that's pretty good. Uh, and they have little quick connects on them already. I find that pretty neat. Uh, some bolts to mount it up. By the way, don't just throw these out because I actually did a stereo install recently and I got rid of these and I ended up needing them. Now here's something different. This is a Bluetooth microphone, but look at this thing. It's gigantic. What is that? It's a fuzz ball. Breaker breaker one nine. It's huge. Uh, it's got some clamps and it just plugs in. Nothing is huge. I could use that for a shirt mic right here. Dang. All right. Now let's look into the actual radio itself. Oh, maybe not. There is a book. Ah, you know what? If you know me, you know I like books. Holy crap. Look at that. It's a mile long. Shows you how to install it. What? Look at this EQ. Holy crap. That's quite an impressive EQ. Uh, there's a lot going on there. That's really cool. Uh, we'll check that out. Oh, look, it's got, so it's got USB. You can actually load the files like 
the old style like anything shows your camera connections pretty cool um, and of course it has the connections here and it appears that everything that it comes with is what they come with let's check out the radio so this guy right here comes with a plate with multiple different mounting options and that will definitely be helpful in certain applications okay okay pretty nice it's kind of crispy let's check it out okay so it's got a cast housing on the back it's not stamped it's actually a, a cast aluminum and everything just comes through super nice uh, okay so that's actually a Wi-Fi antenna that it comes with it says Wi-Fi that's pretty cool there's the expansion harness the main harness and these are the, all the outputs including a subwoofer a lot of guys want to know does it have a subwoofer adjustability I don't know but we'll find out together it has a bezel and what I was saying earlier uh, you're going to need these because if you look on the internet, there's only two holes. So if you want to mount up in certain double in applications, you'll actually have to bolt this on right there. And then bolt it like you would a normal double in. Or, I'm guessing you could use it like this. And bolt it, you know, like that if your car does that. Look at that. It's very sleek. It's very small, but it's heavy. It's super heavy, even though it's so small. So another thing I'm looking at is the power amplifier section is behind this great big heat sink. So, hey, I don't know. There could be something to this, plus a 15 amp fuse. Let's check it out. Let's throw some power to it and turn it on and see, see what she looks like when you actually turn it on. All right, so I'm gonna hook this up to some test equipment and let's test the power and the functions. Okay, so I have it hooked up, so why don't we go ahead and hook it up a little bit and turn it on and zoom in and see what it looks like. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this on. Okay, it's powering on. So the first screen we come to is uh, apparently a radio screen. It's not too bad. We can select our channel using this bar across the top. Supposedly this is a capacitive touch, so it's not like the old style touch screens you should actually be able to slide and touch this just like a cell phone. Uh, let's see what the home menu has. Okay, that's pretty nice of a home menu. Okay, it's pretty snappy, it's not too bad. It looks laggy, but I think that's just the animation. Okay, very interesting. Let's go ahead and connect a Bluetooth device. How do we do that? Bluetooth. Let's see if it pulls up on my phone. Okay, there it is, right there. Okay, now it says to verify the pass key is the same on the phone. I hit okay. Ha, look at that, connected already. It says right there, Android Auto connected to my phone. That's super cool. And let's go to some of the home settings. Uh, let's hook up Android Auto. Welcome to Android Auto. Cable or wireless? Please use your Android phone to do a Bluetooth search for the same name. Okay. And on my phone it says click to continue right there. All right. Okay, so I figured out how to turn on the Android Auto. We'll go ahead and go through to this real quick. It's very simple. What I was missing was where you're actually touching on the screen. And I feel like it shouldn't be, I feel like it shouldn't be that specific, but I did figure it out. All right, so let's run through this. We're gonna click Android Auto. And on my phone, I'm going to come down. The Bluetooth is connected. You see where it says root? What this is doing here on this screen, I didn't realize, is allows you to scroll through and pick which phone you want to connect Android Auto with. All I had to do was click the name of the phone and it should pull it up. There we go. Now we're in the Android Auto menu. And there we go. This is the Android Auto settings, just like you would on any other Android Auto device. 
So, pretty cool. We have uh, the YouTube Music and the other apps. You can see that we can change our song here. Just like normal. And it pulls up. We have the maps. We have the messenger. The phone. So, we have some pretty cool features right here. Why don't we go ahead and hook up the backup camera. So we're going to look up on the back of here for the one that says backup. Right there, the pink one. So this pink wire here, when we touch it to the red for the reverse wire, it'll enter the backup camera mode. It currently says no signal. Let's hook up the camera. So I had the backup camera connected right here. On the back of this, it comes with a red plug and that wires directly to the reverse wire. And then on the other side that connects to the radio, there's another plug with a red wire that hooks up to that pink wire. So once you connect that red wire to the reverse wire and the reverse light comes on, it'll turn this on the radio automatically and put it in this mode right here. Let's check out the quality of the camera. Okay, so this is the camera pulled up on the uh, screen right here and you can see I have it looking at my drill as sort of something to look at. As you can see, it has a very good quality. It's definitely a pretty good quality for a backup camera. On the screen here, if you're using a different style camera, there's a couple of functions. One is the park line function, which will put up the lines. This one already has that, so we'll turn those off. And also the mirror function, which just literally just mirrors it left to right. So if you're looking, if you're using a front or a forward camera, you can turn it to a backup camera. So when you turn back, you can see where it is that you're going. Very useful. And the quality is very nice. What do you say we hook it up to some power and test some of the power functions? As we've seen the Android Auto works and the Bluetooth works and the backup camera works, why don't we check out, say, uh, the output power and see what it is rated per channel uh, and also the RCA outputs and the subwoofer outputs and see how much power they make per channel. All right, let's check out the RMS power of the radio. We're gonna crank this up. You'll see on the Lumi here, the distortion and the clipping towards the end, which is right there. Looks like we're at 17 watts. We'll crank that down just a little bit. It looks like it'll start clipping at 35 on the head unit. And it looks like 17 watts is gonna be the power of this head unit per channel. 17 watts per channel, definitely not bad, definitely pretty good. We like to see that kind of stuff. 17 watts per channel. Let's check the RCAs and see what they produce. So I'm going to connect this to the subwoofer portion of the RCA, which on the back here is the green one. On my Lumi here, I can see the voltage of that RCA. So let's turn it up and see what that RCA voltage is at clipping. Yeah, so we're right around the three volt mark. We start to get kind of crazy with it. So uh, I'm gonna say three volts is going to be the uh, output on the subwoofer. That's definitely not a lot. We'll see if there's uh, any settings here that can change that. And we'll change this to the front. Okay, we're at a uh, one kilohertz, zero dB test tone. Let's see if we can see the RMS voltage of that one. So I'm turn the radio up. Okay, so we're right at about 1.6 volts on that one and we're still not clipping. Very interesting. So just after some quick testing, it looks like we're about three volts on the subwoofer and about two volts on the four channels. That's uh, not very good in my opinion. But let's look at this EQ setting and see if it has anything good. So the actual settings menu has quite a bit of stuff in here. Um, let's check out the sound effects. We have EQ, loudness, and subwoofer. It just has on and off for subwoofer. Um, and of course the uh, EQ is right here. Let's see if we can change our EQ ourselves. Ah, yes. This is what we want right here. This is the EQ, and this is a multi-band EQ with quite a bit of settings and a actually very decent uh, graphic interface right here. So perhaps we can boost this up on the low frequencies. And boost this up on the 1000 frequency.
and run our test again to see if we can get that head unit to clip on the RCAs. Uh, of course, we're also going to probably turn the loudness on and see if we can get that RCA to clip and run that test again. But I think it can do more. All right, let's test this again uh, with everything jacked way up. We should definitely be able to get a better response. You can see here on the sine wave, we're not doing too good. It's definitely starting to destabilize a little bit. And there's the actual clip. I think the frequencies right there are probably to do with the bass boost and the other stuff that we turned on. Um, it's definitely not getting to be a very clean signal pretty much any way we play it. But it dead stops right there at 2.99 volts. So the subwoofer is definitely a three volt output. Let's check the four channel. So if we go ahead and do that same test on the four channel, we should be able to crank this up and see pretty much where it stops and determine what is that volt. Oh, there it is right there. Oh yeah. Okay, so it really destabilizes super hard and it will not go any higher than about three. Oh no, we're really jacking with it now, look at that. Yeah, bass boost and stuff, if you ever wondered what turning all that stuff up does to your signal, that's what it does right there, it just squares it out. It is not doing you any favors. And we are right, we top off right there at about three volts on the knob. So. Uh, this is going to have a 3 volt output for the front and the rear. 3 volts is not very good. It's uh, kind of on the on the low side. So I don't really like the whole 3 volt idea, especially when you're turning all your loud and everything up like that. It's just jacking your signal up. You definitely don't want that. And it won't go any higher than 3 volts. So, uh, well, I mean, it looks good. The Android Auto does work. The backup camera definitely works. Uh, the screen looks very good. It's not as responsive as I would like it to be, but it is still decently responsive. I like that you can slide the volume up and down as soon as you hit the volume buttons right here. And of course it has the instant kill audio right there at the top. It'll mute it, turn it right off. So uh, you almost have to have that if you don't have a dial, but if you want a great big screen, uh, a dial just isn't going to happen in some cases. Uh, but, you know, all in all, it's not too bad. Let's check it out. Okay, even after being on for a while, it's definitely not super hot. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And the feature set on the back of this thing really isn't bad either. It has quite a bit of I.O. So if you're like me and you're an I.O. junkie and you want to have all that stuff, it's pretty much right there. Uh, you can hook up your steering wheel controls and everything else to it. You've got four channel outputs plus your subwoofer. You have your front and rear video inputs uh, for the camera inputs. And then, of course, you have a video input and a video output. Your AVN, your video out, front and rear camera output, subwoofer, um, and, of course, all of your four channels. So there's, uh, there's definitely a bit going on with this thing. Uh, and for $250, the one function that I care about works pretty well, and that happens to be the Android Auto. So for $250, is this a budget gem? Ah, uh, I'm going to say if you want wireless CarPlay, this is probably one of the cheapest ways to get into wireless CarPlay. They do offer this version for about $150 without the wireless CarPlay, uh, and that pretty much puts it in par with pretty much every other cheap Chinese head unit that they sell without wireless CarPlay. So as far as a wireless CarPlay unit goes, that's what I wanted. Um, this one does look pretty good and it's pretty snazzy. And it does have these little plates that allow it to bolt up to all of your different head unit kits. So uh, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up with a caveat. If you don't want wireless CarPlay, I uh, would say there's better radios for the money. If you want to have that wireless car play, but you don't want to spend an absolute fortune. This is one of the nicest units I've seen for the price that you can actually do because uh, this unit is very sleek, very easy to install, has a lot of bells and whistles for what it is, and it's not one of those cheap plastic backed, super thin pot metal units. It actually is uh, 
it's cast and it just feels good it just feels quality all in all uh, definitely not a bad radio once I figured it out and uh, there you go so if you're looking for something neat I'll put a link down in the description below if you want to check it out if not you can check out this other video right here which explains one of the other radios you can get pretty cheap that does have a pretty good feature set it just has to have a little umbilical cord attached in your phone if you want that sweet sweet CarPlay and Android Auto also one of the big features with this one that USB is in the back so if you wanted that factory integration super easy you don't have anything sticking out the front I hate sticking things out the front even the auxiliary I want it all on the back side uh, and I'm pretty sure this has auxiliary from the back side as well so um, nice and sleek easy the screen looks good the camera does really good uh, and it makes really good power on the speaker side it kind of lacks on the RCA side but at least it's above two or two and a half um, three is absolutely nothing special but there you go that's it for me um, if you want to see some more kind of stuff like this you know I'm gonna be dropping videos periodically um, I also did a speaker comparison video I'll put right there as well um, and you can check out the difference between some different speakers um, and until the next one remember stay clean don't clip your stuff and I'll see you in the next video